Welcome to the 2022 Battle of the Books Information Session. We are thrilled to be in our 14th year of this exciting book competition. We will be conducting our battles virtually again this year, and you'll have the opportunity to read some great books, have fun with your friends, and meet some authors. If it is determined that we can safely hold our events in person in February and March, we'll let you know. In a moment, I'll explain how the competition works, how we'll do things virtually this year, and most importantly, our book list. Before we begin, let's take a look at our 2021 Battle of the Books winners, the Brain Fires, a team comprised of Old Donation School and homeschool students. Congratulations, Brain Fires. We will host our virtual events using the Microsoft Teams online platform, and we'll schedule a time for each team to meet virtually with a youth librarian to answer the competition questions. Here is a screenshot of the smart cookies from last year's battle. So how does it work? Each competition will have four rounds of questions, an easy round, a medium round, a medium hard round, and a hard round. There will be 10 questions in each round, which means there will be one question from each book in each round. Prior to the start of the event, your team will choose a spokesperson to state your final answer to the librarian. When the question is read aloud, you will then have one minute to talk to your team members and agree on an answer. All answers will be stated verbally to the librarian officiating your event, unless it's an answer that needs to be verified for spelling, etc., in which case you'll put your answer in the chat box. With that said, spelling does not count unless it's specified. Again, most times you will just be saying the answer to the librarian who is officiating your event. Each correct answer is worth one point unless specifically noted. We may have some multiple point answers to keep things interesting. The team with the most points at the end of the event period moves on to the next competition. And what do I mean by that? Each public library in Virginia Beach will be hosting virtual events for the schools in their area. We will conduct these events as close together as we can and we'll keep track of the answers and scores from each team. When our events are finished, we will let your team manager know as soon as possible which team received the highest score and will be moving on to the next event. The competition will begin in February. All libraries will host our preliminary events in February and a youth librarian will reach out to your team manager to schedule the date. The winning team from each public library, there will be eight teams total, will move on to the semifinals on Monday, February 28th or Tuesday, March 1st. The top four winning teams from the semifinals will then move on to the grand finale on Friday, March 4th. To form a team, you may have a maximum of five Virginia Beach fifth graders per team. You can have less than five on your team, but keep in mind that the more brains on your team, the better chance of remembering the books and answering the questions. Teammates do not need to attend the same school, but you do need to be a fifth grader in Virginia Beach. You'll need one adult team leader who can be a parent, a teacher, a librarian, anyone who is over the age of 18. They will be responsible for making sure that your registration forms are complete and turned in on time and communicating with the public library. Team registration forms can be found on the Virginia Beach Public Library website and in all Virginia Beach Public Libraries. All registration forms must be turned in by January 15th, 2022 in order to compete. And here is a screenshot of the Rage Monsters having fun in last year's competition. And now let's talk about this year's books. All questions for the 2022 fifth grade Battle of the Books will come from these 10 books. Your school library may have copies of these titles and all Virginia Beach Public Libraries have multiple copies of the battle titles, including digital versions like audiobooks, eBooks, and Kindle books on Hoopla and Overdrive when available. Our first story is The Ghost in Apartment 2R by Dennis Markle. It's a hauntingly good tale, and who doesn't like a good ghost story? What if there's a ghost in your brother's room? It stinks that Danny's older brother moved out and went to college, but you know what's worse? He left behind an angry ghost in his room. With the help of his friends Nat and Gus, Danny interviews everyone in his Brooklyn neighborhood to find out about spirits. Is it an Arabian ghoul? A Korean Gwishin? A Polish haunting? Maybe the answer lies with Danny's own Bubby and her tales of a Dybbuk, a Jewish mythological ghost. 
Regardless of its origins, what does the spirit truly want? And can Danny manage to bring the phantom to rest? Read more to find out. Next is Cog by Greg Van Eekhout, a science fiction story about a robot who learns the meaning of true friendship. Cog looks like a normal 12-year-old boy, but his name is short for cognitive development, and he was built to learn. After an accident leaves him damaged, Cog wakes up in an unknown lab, and Gina, the scientist who created and cared for him, is nowhere to be found. Surrounded by scientists who want to study him and remove his brain, Cog recruits four robot accomplices for a mission to find her. Cog, Ada, Proto, Trashbot, and Carr's journey will likely involve much cognitive development in the form of mistakes, but Cog is willing to risk everything to find his way back to Gina. Will he find her? Next is a thrilling fantasy novel, The Silver Arrow by Lev Grossman. Kate and her brother Tom lead dull, uninteresting lives, and if their dull, uninteresting parents are anything to go by, they don't have much to look forward to. Why can't Kate have thrilling adventures and save the world the way people do in books? Even her 11th birthday is shaping up to be mundane, until her mysterious Uncle Herbert, who she's never met before, surprises her with the most unexpected present, a colossal steam locomotive called the Silver Arrow. Kate and Tom's parents want to send it right back where it came from. But Kate and Tom have other ideas, and so does the Silver Arrow. And soon they're off to distant lands along magical rail lines in the company of an assortment of exotic animals who, it turns out, can talk. With only curiosity, excitement, their own resourcefulness, and the thrill of the unknown to guide them, Kate and Tom are on an adventure of a lifetime. And who knows, they just might end up saving the world after all. Our next selection is Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston, a page-turning fantasy filled with suspense, adventure, and plenty of supernatural creatures. Amari Peters has never stopped believing her missing brother Quentin is alive, not even when the police told her otherwise or when she got in trouble for standing up to the bullies who said he was gone for good. So when she finds a ticking briefcase in his closet, containing a nomination for a tryout at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, she's certain the secretive organization holds the key to locating Quentin. If only she can wrap her head around the idea of magicians, fairies, aliens, and other supernatural creatures all being real. Now she must compete for a spot against kids who have known about magic their whole lives. With an evil magician threatening the supernatural world and her own classmates thinking she's an enemy, Amari has never felt more alone. But if she doesn't stick it out and pass the tryouts, she may never find out what happened to Quentin. Our classic title this year is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Lucy is the first to find the secret of the wardrobe in the professor's mysterious old house. At first, her brothers and sisters don't believe her when she tells of her visit to the land of Narnia. But soon, Edmund, then Peter and Susan, step through the wardrobe themselves. In Narnia, they find a country buried under the evil enchantment of the White Witch. When they meet the lion Aslan, they realize they've been called to a great adventure and bravely join the battle to free Narnia from the witch's sinister spell. Will they succeed? Read more to find out. Next, we have superhero comic Antihero by Kate Carius Quinn and Demetria Lunetta. Piper Pajaro and Sloane McBrute are two 13-year-old girls with very different lives, but very similar secrets. Popular outgoing Piper is strong, like ripping the doors off cars strong. She longs to be a superhero even if she tends to leave massive messes in her wake. Snarky Sloane, on the other hand, is super smart, like evil genius smart. To help her family, she has to put those smarts to use for her villainous grandfather. When a mission to steal an experimental technological device brings the two girls face to face with each other, the device sparks, and the two girls switch bodies. Now they must live in each other's shoes as they figure out a way to switch back. What will they learn? Will they switch back? Read more to find out. Next up is hybrid graphic novel Pie in the Sky by Remy Lai. When Jing Wen moves to a new country, he feels like he's landed on Mars. 
School is torture. Making friends is impossible since he doesn't speak English, and he's often stuck looking after his extremely irritating little brother, Yang Hao. To distract himself from the loneliness, Jing Wen daydreams about making all the cakes on the menu of pie in the sky, the bakery his father had planned to open before he unexpectedly passed away. The only problem is his mother has laid down one major rule. The boys are not to use the oven while she's at work. As Jing Wen and Yang Hao bake elaborate cakes, they'll have to cook up elaborate excuses to keep the cake making a secret from Mama. Will their secret be discovered? In Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson, we'll travel to New York City with our protagonist Amara as she learns to navigate the city and her family's history. All Amara wants for her birthday is to visit her father's family in New York City, Harlem to be exact. She can't wait to finally meet her grandpa Earl and cousins in person and to stay in the brownstone where her father grew up. Maybe this will help her understand her family and herself in a new way. But New York City is not exactly what Amara thought it would be. It's crowded with confusing subways, suffocating sidewalks, and her father is too busy with work to spend time with her and too angry to spend time with Grandpa Earl. As she explores, asks questions, and learns more and more about Harlem and about her father and her family history, she realizes how, in some ways more than others, she connects with him, her home, and her family. What will Amara discover? Read more to find out. Our nonfiction selection this year is a picture book called The Spirit of Springer, The Real Life Rescue of an Orphaned Orca by Amanda Obler and illustrated by Levi Hastings. Learn about the remarkable rescue of an orphaned orca calf, Springer, whose story captured hearts. In 2002, a killer whale calf was discovered swimming alone in Puget Sound. This picture book follows the amazing true story of her identification as a member of the A4 pod, a family of northern resident orcas living off the coast of British Columbia, and the team of scientists who work together against all odds to save her from starvation and reunite her with her family. And our final selection this year is Notorious by Gordon Corman. Instead of me telling you about the book, let's hear from Gordon Corman himself. Hi, I'm Gordon Corman, author of Notorious. And this is a special shout out to the Battle of the Books kids in Virginia Beach. Uh, I am so psyched that Notorious is going to be one of the books you'll be reading for the battle this year. Uh, it is a classic murder mystery about a dog. Now, this uh, attractive, well-behaved looking Cocker Spaniel with a bone in his mouth on the cover, that is not our murder victim. That's Barney too. Uh, but if you see this dark, shadowy monster dog in the background, that is the original Barney, and he is our murder victim. So Barney is one of those dogs in every town, every neighborhood, the dog who keeps everybody up till two in the morning howling at the moon and digs up everybody's yard and your TV and internet's always going out because Barney is chewed through the cable wires. And I sort of thought, well, if something ever happens to a dog like that, how are you ever going to figure out who did it? Because every single person in that town has a reason for wanting that dog out of the way. And when Barney dies under mysterious circumstances, two kids make it their goal to determine who killed Barney. How do they do it? Well, you'll have to read Notorious to find the answer. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for reading. Let the battle begin. Before we end, we have an exciting announcement about the guest authors who will be joining our events this year. In years past, we've been lucky enough to have one or two authors join us, and this year we will have six. Throughout February and March, you will have the opportunity to attend author talks with Lev Grossman, author of The Silver Arrow, Amanda Obler, author of The Spirit of Springer, Kate Carius Quinn and Demetria Lunetta, authors of Antihero, Remy Lai, author of Pie in the Sky, and Greg Van Eekhout, author of COG. Stay tuned for more information. 
If you have any questions, visit the Virginia Beach Public Library website at www.vbgov.com libraries, talk to your school librarian, or call the Virginia Beach Public Library. We hope to see you at the 14th Annual Battle of the Books. Thanks for listening.